One of the things that I noted in this phrase in the Apostles' Creed are the prepositions. We believe in, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. God's Son becomes, in a way, our possession. It's another illustration of, of the heart of God who, out of his great love, gives. He loves and gives, the heartbeat of Scripture. And here we find in, in this phrase in the Apostles' Creed that revealed in a very special way. That God's Son, out of the great love, as John said in his letter, his great love for us gives us his Son. So what was God and God's becomes ours. And so we are created as an us. Jesus' gift creates who we are as a church. He is our Lord together. And we often form our identity by being part of a group, don't we? We find our identity and who we are by being part of something greater than ourselves. We find our identity by being part of a family, by being involved in a certain kind of work, by going to a specific kind of school, um, by belonging to a, a club. You know, part of our identity is formed by being part of something bigger or greater than ourselves. In a way, it seems that the human condition drives us from isolation into a community for reasons of safety and security. We are in some ways incomplete as humans until we find ourselves part of a larger group. When I was a child, you know, I saw this acting in, in my own world in a personal way. When I was in elementary school, a number of my classmates became part of a Cub Scout den. Oh, and I so wanted to be part of that den and uh, asked my dad to call and see if I could become part of that den. How did you do and how did you do it and all that. And, you know, it wasn't so much the uh, uniform, which was cool to wear, or the idea of earning badges and that kind of thing, or perhaps going camping someday. It was, it was just the desire to be part of the group. You know, the danger, though, about groups is, is whether they end up being groups that enhance our personhood in some way or diminish us as persons. When we find ourselves in common bond around our Lord, Jesus Christ, then we are given a place where not only we can be built up, but we can also build up each other after the pattern of Christ, the loving and giving of God, we enter into that same loving and giving dynamic. We, as Christians, are those who share this creed, the Apostles' Creed. And this is a creed around which a community of Christ is formed. The creed is not scripture, but it's kind of like a little toolbox. You know, last time we said it was like a coat rack on the hangers of the creed are, and we put the clothing of our scripture and our study on these phrases. But this creed also is kind of like a little toolbox, and we open it up and find very powerful tools that lead us to the great blueprint of scripture and, uh, and, and God's presence who has all the tools that we need to build the Christian life. For when we confess that we believe in Christ... We are aligning ourselves by the one who rose from the dead. And Jesus is just not the founder of some great organization. He is alive. And because he lives, we shall live also. And all the beautiful life that we find in Christ is not just an ancient fable, but because he is God 
and Lord of all. Through the power of the Spirit, he is presently with us in all things. I ran up on this quote about Jesus and it seemed real interesting. A man said that Jesus' resurrection means that he is loose in the world and none of us is safe. He is our Lord, and sooner or later, he will come for us. And when Jesus comes for us, he brings his life, life abundant, peace, forgiveness, the fullness of joy. God gives us the Son, and in this giving, we are blessed. And the pattern of giving out of love as God gave us the Son also forms the pattern for the Christian life with each other. We give in love to each other, and in the giving, we are also strengthened and built up. And as we are bound together in the community, the household of faith, our presence within it and our participation within it helps to make not only our household of faith stronger, but ourselves as well. For a house that is not inhabited, a building that's not inhabited, tends to break down. And I learned this firsthand. When we moved from Danville, Virginia to Ohio, Jenny and I had bought an old Victorian home, over 100 years old. Never again. (laughs) I was a much younger guy then, so I could get up on the roof and do that kind of stuff, you know, which I wouldn't do now. But that house took a lot of care, you know. It just had a lot of needs. And uh, But after we moved to Ohio, we could not sell that house for two and a half years. And so in those two and a half years... You know, the house was saying, all right, Jack, where are you? I'm about to do this strange thing, and you won't be here to take care of me. And sure enough, um, things broke down in it and, uh, and had from afar to take care of things. But a house that's not inhabited tends to break down. And so when we as Christians don't inhabit the household of faith, not only do we weaken the structure for all of us, But we, as individuals, stand in danger of running down as well. The God who creates order out of chaos continues the creation for us. For in Jesus Christ, we are created together to be in us. The church is the new creation of God in the world through Jesus Christ. And in this life that we share together around Jesus Christ our Lord, our lives are given order to, for in a very chaotic world, we bind together to strengthen each other and encourage each other, build up the body of Christ. We aren't brought together to be perfect or to criticize the other for apparent imperfection, but we are made okay in the sharing of our weaknesses. And we scroll down in the creed for just a couple phrases and we find ourselves saying that we believe in the forgiveness of sins. And thank God (laughs) for the forgiveness of sins. We find our own sins forgiven and each other's sins forgiven. And we in turn, in the power of the Spirit, can also enter into being forgiving as well. Our own sins as well as the sins of the other. And that's a point of humility that helps keep us together. In the language of transactional analysis of the 60s and 70s, we might say this, I'm not okay, you're not okay, but that's okay. Because it is in Jesus Christ our Lord who says we are all okay. And if he says you're okay and I'm okay, it's okay. It's good. If he is Lord, the Son of God, and the Christ, then we can have confidence in what he has done, in what he is doing, 
and what he will always do for us. I came across the story of a Chinese man who came to faith, and I just want to share his experience in, in going from no faith to encountering Christ. Chinese man came to faith by learning English. He was poor but ambitious. He could not afford lessons in English, so he attended a Bible study taught in English in a church. And they were studying the Sermon on the Mount, and it hit him. He thought, I would like to follow the teacher of these beautiful ideas. But Jesus' teachings did not fit his ambitions, and he tried to put it aside, but he couldn't. He was saying to himself, he's just a character in a storybook. So he, on his own, began to read and think through Mark's gospel, saying all the while, trying to move away from believing in Jesus, saying while he read, this is not true. It couldn't have happened. But he found himself drawn even deeper. And he came to this point. He said, if Jesus never lived, then the man who invented him is a genius, so staggering, so infinitely greater than any other writer. It's easier to believe in Jesus than in anyone inventing him. Our faith is founded on this historical person. That is to say, not his teaching or anything else which can be detached from Jesus as a person on this particular man. And the miraculous thing about him is that he is alive. If we want to get to know someone, we might identify a person like this. We might say, well, you know, he's related to so-and-so. This is his family. And his work is over here, and he does this. And we would say things like that to identify this person. But no catalog of information ever really answers the question, who is this person? For we never really know who a person is until we know him personally. And even then, we may be wrong. And we certainly will be wrong if we do not learn to love him or her. And here's the great thing about Jesus, as expressed so beautifully in John's letter. He already knows you. He already abides in you. And he loves you. He loves you yesterday, today, and forever. And in this creed, we announce that we take our stand with him. For we believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.